so the step two is to actually just go ahead and set up our server uh, in order to set up our server we will need to use socket io which is going to be what we use for sending and receiving messages and if you go to socket io get started chat you can see that there is uh, some sample code available okay so let's go ahead and copy this and this is going to go ahead and install express let's just go ahead and create a directory cd chat server npm init this is going to initialize our package.json so i'm just gonna let it go through the entire thing and i wanna create uh, index.js that's there now i can just go ahead and copy this so this will install express for us express is simply going to help us in creating our server uh, so as you can see this piece of code will basically help us create our server now we have an index.js which we just created so i'm just going to say code dot so it opens up in visual studio code so i can just paste this what we're doing is we're uh, grabbing express and we are creating a new server and that server is listening on port number 3000 and also we have an endpoint that returns hello world so i'm just going to say oops i'm just going to save that i'm also going to install a uh, nodemon npm install nodemon nodemon index once the server is running let's just go ahead and open Kuvin 3000 and we can see hello world right here okay so what they've done is they have basically modified this endpoint to return an index.html file which we are going to create here so i'm just going to say index.html just for understanding the basic concepts of socket io here we also have npm install socket io which is needed for running our socket server so in order to use socket io we can say where io is equal to require, require socket.io and we pass the http server that we just created all right so let's just copy this paste this entire thing here so the only difference really is we have added this line of code we just added one event listener which is the connection so once a user that is this index.html gets connected to this server will automatically console log a user has connected and you can just say node index and that should run our server as you can see there is a bit of a difference here you can see that there is this input field here and there is a send button here we haven't added any socket io code here yet we have yet to do that okay so there are two scripts that we are fetching one is socket io slash socket io dot js now by default when you install socket io this library is automatically added in your server for our app, we'll basically add the backend code here. So let's just go ahead and paste this inside of the body. So I'm just going to save this and uh, let's go ahead and run this and refresh. Let's see the console and we can see that a user has connected. The reason for that is because we've just initialized socket uh, from here and by default, this will automatically try to connect to our server. Now, since we haven't passed any URL here, it will automatically connect to our current URL. Great. So we have socket IO running, but we're not actually sending and receiving messages here. So if you scroll down a little, so we also have another event handler over here, which is disconnect. Now this is not on IO, but instead it's on socket. This socket is what we received from this user. Okay. So this user sends a socket and the socket will basically be used to identify when this particular user disconnects. So we'll just grab that and we will replace this entire event with this. So a user has connected and this on disconnect, we'll say a user has disconnected. So we'll just save that. Let's just do node more index. And when we refresh, we can see a user has disconnected, a user has connected. Uh, when the server turned off, this, uh, this client was not able to connect to the server. But when the server turned back on, this client tried to connect again to the server and it got connected after that we refreshed so this page closed and it was disconnected and then it was connected again uh, the next step is to actually send a message which you can see here so there's a bit of jquery involved in this but we don't actually need to learn jquery for this i'm just gonna grab and i'm gonna just go ahead and paste it here so i'm just gonna grab these scripts and replace them with these scripts and all this is doing really it's initializing the socket and when we submit the form it emits a new event called chat message when you emit an event we'll be listening to this event over here on the server 
So this is only just sending whatever was inside of M, which is the input field that we have. We actually need to listen to this event. So we're just gonna grab this piece of code. Okay, this is just the socket event for chat message. So you can restart our server and refresh this. So test message. So we can see message test message. The reason this happened is because on index.html we had an event being emitted and here we had an event being listened to and these events are the same that is chat message so what you may have noticed is that we can actually have custom events over here that we can use on the front end and back end now we're sending messages really we're not receiving messages till now so if i were to add a new user here and i was to send test message to or 21 whatever I don't actually receive that message here. We also need to emit this event uh, from the server. So obviously you could have different types of chats. You could have a personal chat between two people or you could have a group chat between several people. And in that case, the server has to decide who this message goes to. So the first idea is to broadcast. So what you can do is you can broadcast this event to everyone. So you can say socket.broadcast.emit if you want it to be sent to a particular socket otherwise you can do io.emit so what is happening in this piece of code is basically we are listening uh, for this chat message so now we're listening for chat message and we're emitting whatever we got back okay but obviously we're not actually displaying it in index.html yet so let's just grab this now we don't need to focus on this script as such because this is all jquery stuff really what we need to focus on is, is this so as you can see, the syntax is very similar for backend and frontend. If we're emitting, we're using socket.emit. When we're listening, we're using socket.on. Similarly, we're using socket.on here and io.emit for emitting the message. So let's just save this. So we actually need to refresh this because the HTML has slightly changed. Uh, hey. Okay, so we see the message right here, but what about the other user? You can see the message right here as well. And if you say, right you can see here that this message is also visible. So at this point, we have a functioning public chat, to be honest, because if someone else was to connect to this URL and send messages, that would be received by everybody. Okay, so this is like a public chat that we have at this point. So now what we need to do is we need to have like a private chat, all right? So in order to have a private chat, we actually need to send a unique sort of identifier 